Since I made my original DIY roof rack video, I've been getting a lot of messages about it. Um, some people showing me pictures of their racks, which are, if I'm honest, mostly better than mine. I've also been getting a lot of questions, a lot of the same questions, so I thought it'd be nice to answer those questions and to talk about some possible upgrades. I also want to go over a few parts that I kind of glossed over last time, like how to actually make an arrow shield or what I did for these very front mounts. And finally, I'm going to give a thorough parts list. First off, I love the feedback. If you think of improvements or you see any mistakes I've made in my videos, shoot me a note so I can either edit the description or make an update video. I'm not going to pretend like I'm not making mistakes. In fact, if you watch my videos, you might notice I like to kind of highlight them so that we can all learn from them. One year update. It's been about a year and the rack has held up nicely. I've taken it on a few trips, uh, mostly with lightweight things on the roof or nothing on the roof, but I have had a couple hundred pounds of construction supplies up there and it worked out great for that. I've also done what you might call durability testing with the bare rack plus my awning up there and uh, everything is still great. I haven't personally used a rooftop tent. A lot of people have asked about this, but I know a couple of people who have built similar racks based on this design have, and they've had no problems with it. So it is a good, robust design. The paint is chipping off in spots from rough use, but that's easy to touch up. If you're worried about it, you can always find a local powder coating company. Okay, so this thing attaches to the roof in four places, the four OEM roof rack mounts, but I do have it supported at the very front with these two little rubber bumpers. They aren't actually physically connected to the roof, they just sort of push against it. They're sort of preloaded, pushing down slightly on the roof. They're just little pillows gently supporting the weight of anything that is in this general area of the roof rack. I added these for two reasons. One is that the front of the rack will sway side to side a bit if you just use flat sidebars and no crossbars above the sunroof. There's no real structure up here to keep it from, man, that is a dirty sunroof. What was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's all wobbly up here and uh, the front supports prevent that. The second reason is that sometimes I put heavy stuff up here and the mounts are pretty far back. So this just gives a little extra support. I recommend them. How are they made? It's just a threaded bumper screwed into a threaded spacer and then a jam nut to hold it in place. I used a T-nut stud to attach it to the bottom of the extruded aluminum. Your height's gonna be a little bit different from mine, so the length will be different, but there's plenty of adjustability here. Place the stud in the extruded aluminum and screw the spacer down tightly onto it. Add a jam nut to your rubber bumper and then thread it in. Adjust its height until there is just a bit of pressure on the roof and then tighten your jam nut and you're good. This may be not the cleanest look. There are several ways to do this. I did this because I happen to have these parts lying around in my garage. Um, you could just make two more brackets like you did back here, and instead of running bolts through them, you could just put some rubber feet on them. That would be more robust and probably look better, but if you just want the easy solution, just get these parts. The part numbers, as well as the part numbers of everything else are in the video description. <laughs> Aero shield. So let's talk about how to mount the aero shield and then how to make it. The shield is just a flat piece of aluminum or plastic or whatever. To get it mounted to the rack at the front, you just have to cut the side pieces at about the same angle as the top of your windshield, and then you just drill some holes so you can run some extruded aluminum across at that angle. Then you have a surface to mount your aero shield to. Then you just attach the shield to the crossbar. I used some L brackets and rivet nuts on the crossbar mostly, also because I had them lying around. And then I put the shield on the car and sort of eyeballed where the holes were gonna be. After I marked the location, I drilled the holes and then I re-drilled them larger because they weren't in the right spot. It's a lot easier if you mark the shield where the front crossbar is and then you just take the front crossbar off. Uh, then you can drill the holes a lot more accurately and assemble it with plenty of room. And then just put the whole assembly back on the rack. My aero shield is pretty simple. It's a rectangle with a couple of small rectangles cut out for the lights, but the nice racks all have this shield that follows the contour of the roof. Uh, I like mine. It's simple. It's easy. I'm lazy. Whatever. But you can actually make this contoured shield pretty easily. You just assemble the rack and the front crossbar, and then you sort of measure a bunch of distances. Uh, draw these distances on your aluminum, connect the dots with a smooth line, and cut it out. Measuring is kind of a pain with a tape measure, so use a straight edge. Hey, maybe you can use that laser distance measure thing that you bought and have no specific use for? No, that actually doesn't work at all. You can also do this by just gluing a bunch of popsicle sticks and then tracing it out on your aluminum. This was an idea sent in to me. You can also do CAD or cardboard aided design. Uh, just kind of cut out pieces of cardboard until it fits and then transfer that design to metal or plastic or something that won't turn into a soggy mess at the first sight of rain. 
I like this approach because it gives you the advantage of actually seeing what it'll look like before you start cutting your metal. You can be a little off with this curve because the aluminum is flexible. Uh, if you do this, you're going to want to get some edge trim for the front so you don't scratch up your paint. Uh, a good seal will prevent whistling noises, so the trim will also prevent any small gaps that might make it sound like you have a middle school flute band on your roof. I mentioned in the last video that I should have made the whole thing a little bit wider. I went with 47 inches, but all sorts of things are 48 inches wide. I recently bought a house, so the local hardware store knows me by name, and I'm always getting plywood or insulation sheets or drywall or some other bullshit that's exactly 48 inches wide. And it would have been a whole lot easier had I just made this thing 48 inches wide. Remember your mounting, you'll need to clear these fasteners, so you might want to make it even wider. Or... Instead of flat bar, you could just use angle all the way down the edges. This is really a better design for a few reasons. It combines the mounts into the side rails, so you get rid of some parts. Then you don't have any fasteners getting in your way up here. It's also stiffer all around. You remember how I was talking about the front being kind of wobbly? It's much less of an issue with the angle because you have material in that direction. In engineering, we would say it has a higher polar moment of inertia. Or, wait, no, a higher second mo The higher... Second area. Ah yes, it's the second moment. Of, you know what, it doesn't matter. The point is, it's a stiffer, better design all around. Several commenters have pointed out that you can use extruded aluminum for the sides as well instead of flat bar or angle. This opens up some possibilities. It gives you more mounting opportunities, but it does increase the cost. Only tangentially related, but I was looking for some on-roof storage that was lockable and waterproof, and I came across gun cases. They're great to throw your camping gear in, or guns if you're into that, and they don't protrude up too much. I'm always afraid of going too high with roof gear, partly because it kills my already deplorable fuel mileage, but also because I don't want to be that guy that accidentally does $7,000 in damage to a Wendy's drive through you can run some straps through the bottom loops and around the crossbar so you can still access what's inside. I wouldn't put anything too valuable in there, but technically speaking, if you put guns in there, you can tell people that you have roof-mounted guns. So here's all of the parts and where to buy them. Um, all of this info with links is in the description. The extruded aluminum crossbars were all from tnuts.com. You can find them cheaper other places, but this site is nicely set up to find exactly what you need, and they'll cut it to your length, they'll tap the ends, they'll do a ton of other stuff that we're not interested in. This is what I got. Uh, about half of them are one inch squares, but I did get a few one inch by two inch rectangles. You'll need to get these angle brackets to keep the one inch square bars from rotating, so grab some of those. Tapping all the holes kind of sucks, so if I were to do it again, I'd probably just pay them to do it. Everyone is asking me where to get these side rails. I got mine from the local Ace Hardware. I think you can probably get them at your local big box hardware store. You can definitely get them from metalsdepot.com or mcmaster.com. Uh, you're looking for two inch wide, quarter inch thick, 6061 aluminum. You need 16 feet in two eight foot lengths. Or uh, if you do like I did and put a separation in the middle, you can use four four foot lengths. If you want to use angled aluminum on the sides, you'll want three inch by three inch aluminum at a quarter inch thick. If you want to save some money here and you're doing the angled sides, you can probably get away with three sixteenths of an inch thick. Uh, or you could probably use 6063 architectural aluminum. On that note, if you're looking at all these aluminum numbers and you're not sure what to get, I generally recommend 6061. It's a good all around aluminum. 6063 has half the strength, but these sidebars are probably overkill already, so you'll be fine. For that matter, 3003 will work out too. If you're doing angled sides instead of flat, this build drawing will be helpful. This was sent to me by someone who saw my video and made his own build, which is frankly better. Honestly, if I were gonna do this again, I would probably just build this. The PDF is linked in the description. Also, the parts list in the description has a column for part numbers that are different if you're doing this angled sides thing. For instance, the spacers and bolts are different. The mounts I made using aluminum angle, here's the specs. You can get it on McMaster or Metals Depot or online metals like the side rails. You need spacers between the original mounts and the new rack, and they need to be this size. So if you do use angle all the way down the sides and use that as your mounting, the front spacers will need to be about a quarter inch longer and the rear ones will need to be about an inch and a quarter longer. 
The bolts that attach it to the roof need to be 50 millimeters long with an M8 by 125 thread pitch. Again, if you do the angle all the way down the sides, you'll need to add a quarter inch to the front bolts and an inch and a quarter to the rear or uh, whatever, it's in the description. All the other fasteners I used were quarter inch diameter, 20 threads per inch button heads. I bought stainless black oxide coated. Don't just get regular steel black oxide that will turn to rust in no time on the roof of your car. The quarter inch bolts were all one inch long. The only special parts I used were these angles. They're made for this aluminum extrusion and you can get them from T-Nuts or McMaster. By the way, you can get literally everything from McMaster.com. If you're building something and you're trying to figure out a solution, just dig around on McMaster. The AeroShield was, I think, 063 aluminum. It's of course 48 inches wide. You'll need about a foot long if you're gonna cut out this curve in the front. Uh, mine was only six inches because I was just doing rectangle. You can also use plastic for the shield, but just make sure it's UV stable. A lot of plastics will become super brittle if you leave them in the sun. My shitty lights were from Amazon. Just type shitty LED roof lights into Amazon and buy the cheapest ones. Don't accidentally get season seven of the Carol Burnett show unless you're into that sort of thing. I also added these lights to the side. Uh, they have come in really handy for camping. If you do that, don't leave them on unless you have a separate battery. Uh, if you do have a separate battery, you should think about getting one of these. I know we're getting really far from the roof rack right now, but I've had a lot of people mention mounting solar panels to the rack. If you have a panel and an auxiliary battery, an automatic disconnect is super nice. These will keep your batteries connected together if you're getting a charge from either the alternator or the solar panel. Uh, but if you're not charging, then it disconnects the two. So you can drain one down and you'll still have the other one to start your car and not leave you stranded in the middle of nowhere. Please ignore this unloomed wad of all red wires. Uh, just, just don't worry about that. Last thing, the front rubber mounts. I already talked about this. Mine is just two each of these three parts, one on each side. You can actually make this whole thing with almost no tools. You'll need some sort of metal saw to cut the front of the sidebars. A hacksaw would work, but a jigsaw isn't too expensive and will make it way easier, especially if you wanna cut out the arrow shield curve. The mounting bolts will need a 12 millimeter wrench or socket. For the quarter inch fasteners, you'll need a 716 inch wrench and 532 seconds Allen wrench, though it will go a lot faster if you invest in a bit driver, which you should. Uh, I know I went a little overboard last time buying tools, but I super recommend a good bit driver. It is very frequently my favorite tool of all time of the day. Other than that, you really just need a way to drill a bunch of holes. You'll need to drill them straight, so get a drill guide or maybe even a cheap drill press, or like I did, you could just buy a lathe mill combo and actually not even be able to use it for the sidebars because they don't really fit in there. You'll need a laser measuring tool that we didn't actually use and you don't actually need. Popsicle sticks, which actually come free with popsicles, so uh, just buy a bunch of popsicles. It's easier to do all this stuff in the garage with this video playing, so get yourself a nice laptop and a 65 inch flat screen garage TV. While you're building this, you might notice that your garage ceiling is actually too short, so go ahead and jackhammer out all the concrete and pour a new garage floor. And uh, your driveway's all f***ed up too, so while you're at it, rent a Bobcat and turn it into an off-road obstacle course. When you're tired of that, get some pavers put in. This is really going to emphasize your dumpy yard, so now would be a good time for a total yard makeover. I'm not really sure what other questionable ideas I'm going to have for my cars in the future, but I can guarantee I will have them. So hit that subscribe button and find out. Thanks for watching.